Hello, my name is Wen, and um, my Twitter handle is at Design Jokes. And um, today, my project is Underline JS. Underline JS is more like my Twitter handle. It's more of a design joke rather than something practical or useful. It does one thing and one thing only that is render the text underline that is slightly better than the browser default. When you apply CSS text decoration underline, this is what you get. Not so bad, but not enough. Certainly not perfect. Before I dive deeper into what the perfect underline is, I want to give you a little, little bit of background of why underline was overlooked over the years and why it needs more attention now. Uh, let's start with type. Type design uh, starts long before the digital age came. Uh, what you're looking at is the early sample of uh, one of the first ty Roman typefaces. Uh, it was published in the year of 1475. That's more than 500 years ago. Uh, during that 500 years, a lot of type problems, I would say most of the type problems had been uh, figured out. The process was slow, but the results were perfect. Uh, unfortunately, underline was not one of the problems that gets solved, simply because it was not around before the inter internet came. Um, type designer Matthew Carter showed us what the earliest digital type looked like in his TED talk. Um, as you can see, it's pixelated, it's ugly. Um, it was not the perfect time. It's, it's not the best time for a type designer to be perfectionist. And we have so many design constraints at the time that we could not overcome. Um, and, and that's the same time underline uh, was invented. It never got the chance to be well sought out, and it, it pretty much stayed the same um, since then. That brings us back to where we are now. Uh, why is the current underline not perfect? First, on Safari, uh, it has ghost pixels around the edges. On Chrome, the underline was way too thick. On, uh, on Chrome and uh, on Safari, uh, it's, it sits too close to the uh, text baseline. Uh, it makes me and other nerds very uncomfortable. <laughs> and on Firefox and Chrome, the underline go across the descender very brutally. It destructs the type. And that's where the underline JS came in. Uh, the render of underline doesn't have any ghost pixels. It's not just pixel perfect. It's uh, pixel perfect on a half pixel level for retina display. It has an optimal thin stroke width that is calculated based on the uh, font. It's one sixth of the width of the period mark. Uh, it sits on an optimal Y position between the text baseline and the descender line. And the op optimal Y position turned out to be the golden ratio point. Uh, last but not least, it renders holes around the uh, descenders that it completely respects the type shape and let the type shine. And if you ask, the, the, whole, the size of the hole are also optimized to perfection. Uh, the underlying JS was never designed to be a practical or useful JavaScript. It's more exploratory. It's trying to push the boundary of uh, web typography. I want to propose this following CSS rule to W3C standard for CSS4 edition. Um, and now let's take a look at the live demo. Um, uh, the, uh, the underlying JS was based on Canvas and JavaScript. Canvas comes with many benefits. It doesn't have any boundaries. It allows me to do uh, a lot of stuff. Um, uh, so far, I've only been talking about the forms of the underlying. What about this, its function? Could underlines function be reimagined or even redefined? Um, does it always have to be just an indicator of hyperlinks? Uh, could it be more fun, such as a guitar string that you can grab and release, or just plug it? Uh, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of possibility that you can we can explore with underline JS. The project's completely open source on GitHub. Search keyword underline. Uh, we uh, I I work on more developer joined to the party. Uh, if you want to reach to me, I'm at Design Jokes at Twitter, or you can find me on uh, in the after party. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I think we have time for a couple questions. Does anyone have any questions for Wen Ting? Let's see somebody somewhere. Oh, wait, right there. Yep, with the waving hand. Yeah. 
Uh, the question is, what's next? The next is to make the underlying JS more perfect, not on Retina display, but on the 3X for uh, some of the Android phones. It's already there, actually. I just haven't tested it out uh, quite well. And also, there's more, uh, as I said, there's more aspect of underlying we can explore, such as interactions, such as maybe underlying could be a place we can do data visualizations uh, somehow. There's many aspects. I want to make it more uh, friendly to other developers to join. So I want to make uh, the API more readable for other developer, and also I really want to push. Uh, I I, de I develop this library not expecting people to use it because who would want to use a library just to render a tiny little underline more perfectly, <laughs> um, except those nerd. <laughs> um, I really want to use this as more like a. Uh, a, a proposal to W3C that the browser should render the underline the way it should be. So I'm hopefully in the future those CSS could be available for just CSS, not JavaScript, and the browser will render uh, the underline based on my algorithm. All right, thank you. Is there any other questions for Wen Ting? Have it right over there. So what's an example of where your uh, library gets super fancy with the, uh, with the programming logic magic? Is that right? Yeah. Something like that. Um, if you are asking about the algorithm, how to draw the line between uh, behind the letter G and the little loop, um, it's ac actually quite easy. But it, it involves a lot of calculations, such as where does the underline start and end, where it sits. But the basic logic is you draw a line. Uh, after you find out where you want to draw it, you draw it on the canvas and put the canvas behind the text. And then you draw the text on top of that line, but you, uh, you, you, ex you enter another mode in canvas that is erase instead of, uh, instead of uh, uh, drawing uh, new stuff on it. Uh, and you put a stroke, stroke on the text. And the, the size of a stroke, uh, as you imagine, is also optimized to perfection. Um, <laughs> So it's really about getting really, really nerdy and you know, go to the extreme. Awesome. I think we've got time for just one more question. Let's see. I can never see up in the top. Anyone at the top? The tippy top? Oh, yep, right there. Sure. Sold. Oh, wow. Uh, all right, next question. Um, so did you consider doing anything with strike through, Winting? Um, I actually thought about it. I think maybe this could be a start that a lot of element, like the basic element of the uh, web can be reinvented or reimagined. It's, it's actually quite powerful if you think about it. Even though it's a tiny little basic element that you, you may think is, it can be overlooked, but everyone's using it. If you reinvent some stuff, your name would be in the web of the history. I mean, the history of the web, sorry. <laughs> so All maybe right. you should do it. Well done. All right, thank you so much.